Hello there folks, this quick video today is going to show you how to use a Red Lion CR3K 7H HMI to act as both a Modbus uh, RTU uh, master and also a Modbus slave device. Uh, this product is really unique because this particular HMI actually has two RAS45 ports on it. So we're going to configure one of the ports to act as a Modbus master and then the other port to act as a Modbus slave. So if I quickly just show you, if I look at the website for Red Lion, and this is the seven inch screen I happen to have in front of me right here. And uh, this particular unit under specifications, a couple of nice things I like to talk about this CR3K seven inch model. It comes with two RS, or it comes with two ethernet ports, two RS232 ports, two USB ports, and of course two additional RS45 ports on here as well. So it's a really nice product. If I look at the data sheet for this product, this is what you download on the data sheet. I believe if I go to page five on this data sheet, I'll show you what I'm talking about here when it talks about the, the different connections on it. So this is the seven inch that I have here in this particular unit here. Like I said, it has one 485 port right here that we're gonna use. It will set up, uh, this one here will set up as our Modbus master. And then on the side of the unit, it has another RS45 port here, port B, We'll set this guy up here to be our Modbus slave device here. So that's what we'll do there. So if we go back to Crimson here, and we're going to start off on the left-hand side. We'll go to Communications. And on the left side, I'm going to expand the serial ports. And I'm going to click on uh, the RS45 port A. That's the one that's on the uh, front and back of it there. And if I hit the Pick button here, I'm going to go down and find Modbus Master here. We'll look for Modbus here for the driver right here and we're going to choose the universal master this will be our uh, master for this guy we'll click ok notice i'm going to leave all the baud rate everything settings here default 9600 81 and none to our uh, modbus rtu over here on the left where it says plc1 i think i'll call this for this one let's because this is actually going to be the device so let's call it slave underscore port b okay that's the device it's going to be talking to. Notice here the drop number one. I'm going to leave everything else here by default. OK. So now if I go to that RS45 port, COM port B over here, this is the one that's on the side, we're going to set this one up to act as a Modbus slave. So we're going to hit here, go down here and slide down the word Modbus right here. And this time I'm going to choose RTU slave for my driver this time. RTU slave. Click OK. And then you know what, folks, I want to make this a little wider so you can see it. This way, you can see this is the master, the first one we did, and this is the second one here. Now, I'm going to leave all these settings here the same. Uh, the only thing I do here normally when I'm playing with this, I don't know why, but I always reverse these words because our the Modbus master driver here, uh, these are, does it show it right here? By default, these are always high and then low, and I don't know why, but this driver comes in backwards. So I always, when I'm doing this, I just go ahead and set these up as high and then low. Now this guy, this is going to be our port B uh, device. So I'm just going to call this one, uh, we'll just call it slave, because that's what it's going to be. Okay, so this here's this guy here is going to pull this guy and vice versa, but this one's going to act as a slave to this guy. So here we have that slave. Now, since we're designing our own slave, we have to tell it what registers we want to share with any master who wants to pull it. So since we're designing this slave device, we're going to add the add gateway block here, which creates a block one underneath here. Then if I click on block one, and right here, if I hit the pick button, I can select the different registers. I usually just go to the holding registers, and we'll leave this as 40,001, the default number here. Click OK. And let's just say for this example, we're just going to share one word. So if I click one here, you'll see the tree drops below here. Now if I click on this, uh, you can go to devices. Or I can go to data tags, but notice I don't have any data tags. So let's create a tag for our slave. So if we go over here to the left, click on data tags, and let's go ahead and create a new integer tag here. And let's call this guy uh, slave, oops, slave underscore tag. This will be the tag for the slave. So I'm going to leave this guy blue internal. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the special here. I'm going to go back to communications. This is where people get a little tricky. I want to share this tag with the slave so anybody wants to see it can so if you watch what I do here I'm clicked on this here 
I went to data tags here before you can be a device by normal go to data tags now that I have a tag I'm just gonna grab this guy and drag and drop it right here now if you notice this arrow right here if you look at this arrow this arrow currently is going this way that means anytime this guy changes it's gonna put it in this location here waiting for any master to come well I want to make this bi-directional so I want to make it so if I change it here it goes to the master and then if the master wants to write it to me I want to read it as well so I click on the block here I'm going to change the direction here this CR3K2 device hit the pull down and choose device to C3 notice now how the arrow or the block is red and notice how the arrows are back and forth so this should now make this a bi-directional tag so that looks good there now what we want to do is we want the master this guy here to pull this guy so if we go to data tags over here and let's create a new tag here and uh, let's call this um, where did I call this over here port B so let's go here let's call this slave underscore port B uh, underscore tag okay notice it's blue right now that's because I haven't mapped anything so I'm gonna go over here where it says source and hit the pull down where it says internal and right below here there's that slave device we just configured so I'll click on this and we're gonna look at the holding registers that's where we put that so we're gonna look at these holding registers here 40,001 is the default address right here click OK notice the icon turned red that's because this by default comes in as read, read and write so we're gonna leave it as read and write and I often change this to an unsigned integer so now let's see if this works I'm gonna go over to the display page on the left and then I'm gonna to go to the right side and I'm gonna grab this tag first and I'll drag it right here and I'll make this guy be a little bigger like this I'm gonna make it boom hold and data entry if you've ever been to one of my classes you know that I'm always a uh, I like to uh, teach put a box around this so that the operator knows where to click so I'm gonna double click on it I'm going to go to the edge tab and I'll give it some border and uh, we'll make this guy maybe be, uh, make it uh, blue for this test. Okay. I mean, you know what? I'm not going to do blue. I'm going to make red or green. Red, red will be fine. Okay. Because it's read right. So we'll do that. That way it's red here. Okay. So now I'm going to take this tag over here, the slave tag, and go down here. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, basically I'm going to copy the settings from here to here. So I'll right click and I'll say copy from all formatting. This guy right here, boom. And then I'll right click on this one and I'll say same size as this guy right here. However, to make this for the uh, video, I'm going to change this guy border to blue. That way it matches over here. So I double click, choose blue, click OK. All right, so there we have it. So I think we're ready to test this out. So I'm going to go ahead and download this to my screen. Well, before I download, let me go over here and see if I get the web server up and running. Here's the web server running. Uh, Really? Oh, hold on a second. I gotta fix something. Yeah, if I go back to here, I don't know why we do this by default. And I'll do this. Looks like the full display page. Okay, looks good. All right, and, and we want to enable this remote control, so we can control from there. Okay, let's go ahead and see what it does now. So I'm gonna hit the download right here. Downloads to it. Now, if I go back to the web page, it's running, and I'll reload this page here, or maybe I won't. Go back to here, reload. Okay, I'm gonna click remote view. Okay, so notice something right now. You can see this dash lines right here because this is the master guy that's pulling this one. Now this guy is just a slave device, so it doesn't matter what I put in here, it's just gonna sit there. It does not matter what I put in, it's gonna sit there. This does not prove any communications at this time. The dash lines does, if I was talking, means this means it's not talking. So one thing that's interesting about the red line products uh, is that you can take a basically an Ethernet cable and you could connect it to one of the ports on the unit. So let me see if I can get my webcam here to work. Hold on here, team. Well, I can't get the webcam to work right now, so I'm gonna add that to the video here as soon as I get done. But I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna take an Ethernet port or an Ethernet cable and I'm gonna plug it into the RJ45 jack on the screen. And then I'll plug the other one into the side jack here. Here we go. And notice right away when I plug it in, you saw that go to a zero. So uh, if I put a number in here, say I put in some number, one, two, three, boom, you can see the number shows up over here as a slave device. And if I click this and put this as four, five, six, for instance, boom, you see it shows up over here as well. 
So pretty cool proving that I'm talking uh, as a Modbus master and a slave to the same device. Now, if I disconnect the, the cable that I just plugged in, we're going to sit here. Oh, there it went. See, it just timed out because I disconnected it. Usually it takes longer, but uh, I'll plug it back in and watch it start right back up. Boom. So pretty darn cool, easy example. Let me see if I can uh, add some additional. If I can grab the video and throw that in here, the pictures of the lights. Because once the communication is blinking, or once communication is occurring, we get the red and the green lights to blink really fast on the port. So I'm going to try to add that to this video. So let's see. All right, so we're going to show off a little bit of the back. You can see right now, this is the database. We've got dash lines here. This is the slave. So let me show you what's on the back of this unit here. If I take this guy, I'll flip it over here real quick. Power key out of the way, maybe not. Okay. So this unit is the CR3000 7-inch model. It's pretty cool because it's got two Ethernet ports. RS-232 port, another RS-232 port here. This is my RS-45 port right here, blinking. That's port A. I don't know if you can read that really fine print right there. That's port A. And then if I go over to the side here, there's my other port. There's currently port B in this case. That's port B. So, I usually just take a standard Ethernet cable. I've got a short cable here. I always put uh, red on it, indicating it's half a meter length. And this side, Happens to be missing the quick tab. So if I plug this guy in, notice we got a blinking port here. See, I got it blinking. So it's looking for comms. If we plug this guy in here, let's see what happens here. Boom. Look. Once I get it plugged in, I get fast blinky blinky. Red and green, transmit and receive on both sides. Blinky blinky. So if I go ahead and flip this guy over, hopefully it'll stay plugged in. <clears throat> Once I plug it and float, or flip it over here. You can see, now see it came loose, so I plug it back in. So now if I go here, put in a number, notice 8, 8 here. So that's coming from here to the slave. And then if I click on this one, put in a different number. Say I put in number 5, for instance, enter. Now that's going to here to here. And of course, if I disconnect the cable on the side here, watch, I'll pull it out. Here we go. Boom. Pull it out. So it's no longer connected. There it is hanging out right there. See the dashed lines right here? And if I can plug it back in, <clears throat> if I can line it up, there I go, I'll plug it back in, boom. Once I plug it back in, you see you can see the number. Pretty cool, team.